this is going to be a introduction to Kotlin and functional programming. So how many of you are familiar with functional programming? Oh, okay. <laughs> Higher expectations. Okay, so I'm going to present myself. I'm Noel Luaces. I'm a software engineer here in Thoughtworks since uh, October. And most of my experience is with as a Java developer. So for me, changing this last year to functional programming was kind of dramatic, but when I tried with Kotlin, it was kind of smooth. So I want to uh, show you all the things that I learned this year. What is Kotlin? Kotlin is an object-oriented language. It's designed to fully operate with Java and other JVM languages, but it's also a functional programming uh, language. And it's a, a real good introductory language to functional programming. It's also general purpose. It can be used as a backend, in the front end, and also as a scripting. One important thing is now it's a mobile standard. That is, Android has officially adopted as uh, the supported language for the development. So uh, another background is like it was developed by JetBrains in 2011 and its name comes from Kotlin Island, Russia. The main purpose of the design of the language was that th they wanted to have a language that has the same features as Scala, but uh, with a compilation velocity near as the Java. So let's get started with the main thing of the functional programming that are the function types. Function types in functional programming are the first class citizens. This means that a function can be a value and also can be uh, introduced as a parameter in other functions. So we have this example. We have here a value that its class is a function with two parameters that returns a an integer. And the implementation of this is these lambda expressions, two variables and the operation. Besides being value, we can see that we can call in as a function. So here we have another example. We created a function, a regular function, but we can see that we can pass as a reference inside another function. This is the map function. So we have here a list of three elements. We can apply this function to each of them. Another really cool feature of function types in Kotlin is that we can create classes that extends a function. So in this type class uh, extends this lambda expression and we have to override this function, the function invoke, to put all the implementation here. As you can see, the, the use is kind of straightforward. We instantiate this value with this class, and then we call it as a function. Other thing is that maybe in our code, we want to keep it simple somehow. <laughs> and we can create a type alias that extracts all these lambda function and we can use this as a, as a value, and we don't have all this noise in, in our code. Personally, I prefer this thing here, but I don't know, maybe it's more readable for someone. We saw earlier that we use map. Map is an example of higher under functions. These are the functions that can return a function and also receive function as a parameters. And in, in Kotlin, uh, we, al we already have higher order functions. We have the scope functions like run, apply, let, with, and also that accepts a lambda expression. And another functions like, like we see before, map, flat map, filter, and fold. This is like the, the, first, uh, the first day that I see this type of programming, I was kind of puzzled, but now I really love it, so <laughs> it, it gets time, but. So in this case, uh, we see uh, uh, we have a list of three elements, and we call this higher the function map, passing a lambda inside. And this lambda is going to transform these three values. Then we are going to call another higher under function, fold, passing the lambda uh, expression that we want to apply and the accumulator and the value by default. And at the end, we are going to call another higher order function that is a, a scope function that is going to print the result of this chain. Talking about functions and a concept not related specifically with Kotlin is the pure functions. This is a concept that 
is used to using in functional programming. The pure functions are the ones that doesn't, uh, every time that we put the same input, we are going to obtain the same output. So they don't have, they don't depend of exter external factors and they don't have observable side effects uh, like modifying a variable pass by reference and for that are easy to test. And we are going to see an example. This is a really simple example of an addition. And um, we see that every time that we put the same values as a parameters, we are going to obtain the same result. And the same thing with this function here that is going to return the expected result. But what happens if we are using not pure functions? When we try to test this, we need to somehow mock this another function and we depends of ex external things that we have to take care of doing the test. And this is going to make a, text, a test more complex. Another feature that Kotlin provides is uh, immutability. Immutability is when we instantiate a value and the value remains with the value that we created and they are easy to write and they, they, they make much more cleaner code. And also, there is easier to parallelize, uh, parallelize programs because they don't depend uh, between each other. The, the status of the object is the same. To do this, we use the keyboard val. This means that the, the value is going to be initialized only one time. Uh, data classes that uh, are really cool feature about Kotlin they're using values like here. In this example, we see that we have a data class and the constructor is going to have multiple objects. So these values cannot change and we can create two data classes with the same values. And we can see uh, at the end that those data classes are the same. This is, the data class is really cool because we don't have to rely on equals or or, clear, or implement our hash code or whatever and and also we don't need to well but this is like more related to Kotlin it, we don't need to uh, create all the boulder plate for getters and setters and um, like it's really simple the pattern matching is uh, the 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 biggest thing in Kotlin because it's going to be used in everything as we, we are going to see. The pattern matching in Kotlin is used with the when block and it's like a switch case in Java but with more benefits. Uh, we don't need to put break statements and we can do a lot of things that we cannot do in Java. We can do a smartcast. A smartcast is a really cool feature that allow us to access uh, to methods and properties of the objects without casting it. So we are going to see that in an example. Uh, and, and also the uh, smartcast can detect subclasses. In this case, we have a simple example here about an expression with pattern matching in Kotlin. It's pretty straightforward. So we don't need the breaks as we see before in Java. And we only need to uh, specify the else case if we don't match these three cases. And this is like the really big one because we are expecting a superclass any, but we can detect or match with different subclasses. And this is the, the is key value is like the instance of in Java. As you can see, we can accede uh, to the properties of this type of value. Uh, we don't need to do a class cast. So this process is much more light than in programming in Java. Carrying. Carrying is more, in reality, we have in Kotlin a partial carrying. It's not that. But it, it's a mathematical technique that consists to break down a, a function that receives more than one parameter in a, a sequential call to functions with uh, each parameter. So here, we have an example of, uh, of an, again, an addition. And we can explain like this, like we have a function that receives an integer and the implementation is this lambda expression with another integer and the, the addition. We can call this way. 
instead of passing the two parameters here, we can call partially the, fu the function passing the each of them parameters. This could be cool to readability in some cases. No safety is not related to functional programming, but it's a really nice thing in Kotlin, and you're going to see why. By default, calls in Kotlin are safe calls. If we want to uh, treat null values, we have to be really explicit with that, with this operator, the double exclamation mark. I don't know if you can see his, but we have here uh, an example that they are not going to compile, like uh, trying to assign now to uh, when creating a variable or assigning a variable. So if we, need, if we want to assign a null value, we need to specify this question mark here. So if we are trying to call this variable, uh, this value, sorry, that is nullable, this is not going to compile. We cannot access to the uh, property length without, again, applying the, the, the question mark. And this is really useful because this is, not going, this is never going to have a null pointer exception. This is going to execute if the uh, value of record name is different from null. But if we, if we are missing the null pointer exceptions, uh, we like it a lot, we can ask uh, two question marks here. If, if this is null, this is going to break. So. so what is missing here? We have like a really cool language that is concise, that is simple that avoids null pointer exceptions, but can we do something regarding handling exceptions in a functional way? On the other hand, if our methods or our code is failing because it's normal to fail, maybe we don't need to throw exceptions and return null values or all the things that we used to do. Also, not handle these exceptions is going to make our code really easy to read. So now uh, enters Arrow. Arrow is an open source library sponsored by 47 Degrees. Uh, it's a fusion between uh, category and functional, and it's really, really new. It's, uh, the first release was in 2018. It's equivalent for CATS for Scala and Babar for Java. We have the, the, the first case of handling errors. In, in Java, uh, if we if we create, I don't know, a repository that retrieves things from database, if some people prefer to throw an exception if the, we couldn't find that in the database, and other people prefer to return a null if we couldn't return anything. But this is, for me, is not the very, um, the best way to do that. We can try to use in the data type option that avoids, again, null pointer exceptions, we, but it's, it doesn't provide much more error detail. So the possible values are none or some. And we have here an example. We are not going to mind about the implementation, but here we have a function that retrieves books from the database uh, by its uh, identifier. And the result is going to be an option of a book. So if, if we call this method inside this piece of code, if we use in pattern matching as we saw before, if the result is type sum, we are going to print found it. And if the, the uh, result is none, we are going to print nothing to see here. Another way to, besides pattern matching to deal with these option values is the function fault but I want to explain more how are we dealing with this type of values. So imagine that an option is like a box, and if the box is empty, in this case is none, we are going to apply this lambda function that doesn't receive any, any parameter. And if, we, if the box uh, has a book, we are going to apply this other uh, lambda expression that is going to print the name of the book. So this is the code the, the code at the library, the Arrow library, and we see that the function fold is applying the pattern matching that we see before. In the case that the object is none, we are going to apply the lambda expression, in this case the if empty, and if, if, 
we have a result, we are going to apply this other lambda expression. We could do this with the pattern matching, or we can be more concise and call the repository method with the function fold, specifying the lambda expressions that should be executed in each case. Uh, imagine that our code is not throwing exceptions. We are handled uh, it like very pretty, okay, without nulls or exceptions. But sometimes we are going to call another services that we don't control, and maybe they are going to s throw exceptions, and we need to control them. So for that, we can use the data type try. The data type try is useful for uh, handle runtime exceptions and uh, has two values, like all these data types, is failure or success, and um, can be combined with a when statement that use a smart cast. So we have an example here. B in inside the try, we are going to call to some external service that could be or, or not throw an exception. And this is a nicer way to do the try catch in Java. If you remember, we do try catch with each type of exception that we were uh, expecting. So we can do the same thing here, inside here, with pattern matching. So thanks to the smart cast, uh, we can catch the specific exception and access to the different uh, values of methods of each exception. But we have more errors besides exceptions or, or absence of values. We have also things that we consider that is an error and we should address in that way. So the, f the best thing is to use the data type either. The data type either uh, represents a value with two possibilities. The left part is by com uh, convention is the, l the error case and the right part is the happy case. Uh, using either, uh, it's useful. To, pro, uh, to fail fast, because we are going to return an either in the moment that the code is failing, and it's going to provide all the context that we have at that moment. So we, we can create, imagine that we have a, a method called save book, and we pass a book as a parameter, and we are going to return an either of a failure, because for some reason we couldn't save that in the repository, or a, or a identifier of that book. So a, a nice way to create that either is using the either.com uh, method that uh, it's going to eval this expression here and it's going to apply, uh, it's going to create an either with this UUID or this failure by the, the result of this expression. Another way more simple to see this is using the already known pattern matching. We are going to call this function that is going to uh, return a Boolean to know if the book is already uh, saved in, the, in, the, in, in our repository. So if it's true, we are going to create this class failure. Uh, is it false? We are going to call this other function that is going to return us this UUID. So with these uh, methods, we are going to wrap this failure here, this result, in an either in the, lef, uh, in the left part. And with this method, we are going to wrap this result in an either in the right part. So how, how can we deal with these either, valu uh, either values? So again, we can use pattern matching. So if we have a result with an either in the left part, we are going to print this nice message. And if it's right, we are going to print this other message. In these cases, we are, we are going to specify the failure that we found, and in the, if we have a success, we are going to print um, a message with the identifier that we saved. But there is another way to uh, deal with either, is thanks for, uh, with the function bymap. So for understand this, we are going to explain uh, more in detail how can we deal with this? So imagine that the either, this time is a box, the Schrodinger cat box. And if you open the box, uh, you can find the cat dead, therefore it's a failure, and therefore you are going to apply this uh, lambda expression that is uh, creating a, a failure with the cat passing by parameter. Or uh, if the cat is alive, 
you are going to show the cat's name. So this is the code of Arrow on how bimap is built. If we see bimap, we are passing the left operation and the right operation. And the, this, this function is also calling fold that if you can see, they are applying pattern matching. So pattern matching is the common thing in, in this library. And this is like an abstraction of an abstraction of the, more the, the, same, the same tools. So we saw that we, we can deal with the result of saving a book with pattern matching, but we can also do it in a nicer way using bimap. In this case, by convention, we pass here the lambda expression for the, the, the left part, the, the failure, and we pass here the lambda expression for the right part. Another thing that we have to have in mind dealing with either is that by default, this function map fold at right bias. So if we apply this map, this, this function is only applied in the right part. So if we want to map only the left part, we need to use the map left. Another interesting to do this is uh, maybe there is a time that we want to check all the values that we receive in our request, for example like name, surname, or et cetera. We want to do that all at the same time, uh, in parallelized. So for this, we can use the type validated. And the validated collects all the errors at once and has two also two possible values, valid or invalid. And to do this, we have to implement some things. So the first step is to create, a, a, well, the C class is an abstract class with all our validations that we want to do. In this case, we need to define what is an invalid email or a valid username. And to do this, uh, we can do another, f uh, we can extend functions. We can use extend functions that indicates, again, with pattern matching, when, a, uh, when we consider that a mail is valid or not. Probably we had here uh, regex or something like that that tell us that this mail is not uh, fulfilling all uh, our conditions. So these extended functions uh, are returning a non-empty list of validations or error validations or the data itself. So if we have a, a string with an um, email. We can put execute dot validate email and the result is going to be the proper string or a list of validation errors. The same thing with the validate username. We have here uh, what we, we consider a valid username with regex or whatever. Um, it's also an extended function of the string. Here is when we wrap up all together. So this function uh, emulates that we are going to validate all the attributes that is inside of a request, in this case, only mail and username, and we are going to return the, all, all the strings, like all the error messages uh, related to that validation or the data itself. So imagine that in, you, in a controller, you have this as a first step. You call this validate data, passing all the values of the, the request, and if you uh, get uh, a data means like everything went okay, and therefore you are going to call your service or another uh, components that you have. And if, but if you get a list of non-empty strings with all the errors, you want to send this, this back to the client. Well, to sum up, we see a, a lot of features that Kotlin has for functional programming. We have uh, how there are the functions, immutability, pattern matching, some type of carrying, partial carrying, and all the things that Arrow provides in order to handle errors. And just to say that uh, Kotlin was uh, already included in technology radar of 2018 because of the concise uh, syntax and uh, no safety and also because of the Android adoption as supported language. But I, I would say I, that is a great introductory language from people that comes from a Java uh, environment 
to start with uh, functional programming. And this year in the Tech Radar uh, was also introduced uh, Arrow with all these uh, awesome data types that we saw. And it's also a, a functional programming uh, library that has a lot of uh, abstractions, like really useful to complete code needs somehow. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.